look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. This has got to be some sweet vindication for you. Your coffee must have tasted so good this morning. <laughs> There's not enough coffee in the world this morning, Betty. It's been a long <laughs> week, but a great week. And last night was so epic. We are so proud of President Trump. He had a spectacular debate performance. Honestly, one of the best debate performances of all time. He was focused. He was disciplined. He was strong. He was on message. He focused on the issues voters actually care about. And then, of course, there was Joe Biden, which was absolutely catastrophic. Can you try and can you explain to us from inside of the campaign, maybe like what the takeaway was when you saw Joe Biden, uh, like his jaw start to droop and his tongue wag out and his eyes begin to glaze over? I've never seen anything like it. I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. It's literally what everyone's talking about. Like, how geeked out was this dude? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, it was shocking. And right out the gate, his voice was the first thing I think we all noticed as, as a country and yes. as a campaign. And the first thought was, what the heck have they been doing to him in the woods at Camp David for the past <laughs> week? I thought he was up there, hold away, getting massages, probably some Botox, B12 injections. <laughs> My goodness, no, he sounded and looked horrid. And, you know, it really proved our point. There is a little bit of vindication today because we've been battling the fake news now for the past several weeks who have been accusing us of deceptively editing videos and engaging mm. in cheap fakes. Mm. Now the whole world sees there is nothing fake about Joe Biden's lack of mental acuity. And last night proved this race isn't about age. It's about competence. And Joe Biden is incompetent. He cannot lead this country for another four years. There's just simply no way. Uh, from your internal metrics, uh, and I'm sure you had sort of live reactions to this. What was the what what was the highlight for President Trump uh, from the campaign perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a couple of things. One, when Joe Biden had that really terrible line and a uh, brain lapse when he said, "I beat Medicare," and President Trump <laughs> shot back with his. Classic one liner. So you did beat it. You beat it into the ground and you're going to continue to. That was just epic. I thought that President Trump also showed a lot of great compassion last night that really resonated with voters at home, especially when he talked about the victims of migrant crime. He knows mm -hmm. these families personally. He's taken time mm -hmm. to meet with them, to call these mourning mothers across the country and for Joe Biden to stand up there and just pretend they don't exist and deny responsibility for his open border invasion, I think was a very powerful moment. And my favorite line of all was when the president said um, that in Joe Biden's America, we have illegal aliens living in luxury hotels while homeless veterans are living in the streets. That's a, a yes. sharp contrast that I don't think any American wants to hear. And it was a very powerful message. Yes. Could you could you explain one thing for me? And I, I'm trying not to speculate on on what Joe Biden meant by this. But in talking about migrant crime and in talking about your boss uh, going to the funerals mm -hmm. of young Americans who've died at the hands of criminal aliens, um, Joe Biden said that the real problem in America is women, and I'm quoting here, being raped by their sisters. Um, could you please unpack that for me? You know, Benny, you're going to have to have the Biden campaign spokesperson on your show to ask them what he meant by that, because I have absolutely no idea. It was one of many moments where he clearly did not know what he was saying. It was very odd. And it was a, a botched response. I mean, look, the Democrats, they feel their number one strongest issue is abortion. And Joe Biden couldn't even defend his position on that. Yes. Uh, he was weak on everything, but even on the issues where Democrats are perceived to be stronger. And it just shows that they're not. And President Trump, I think, answered the question on abortion very effectively, explaining uh, his position and, and pledging not to sign a federal ban when he's in office, which is what he's said now for months. But the Democrats keep lying about it. So will the golf game happen? Many <laughs> saying, like, just let let's just let him play golf. Right. Like and let, let's just solve it there. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was Dave Portnoy who said, let's just solve this on the course and it'll all be said and done. Uh, hey, 
I'm sure President Trump would absolutely host Joe Biden at one of his many beautiful clubs to play a round of golf. I do not think that is going to happen. Okay, so you guys have got to be walking on air. Now, I've seen the ads that have been rolled out. Uh, the polling, obviously, it's the snap polling at least shows massive dominance in your favor. Uh, one, like how 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 vindicated are you in your preparation for all this? Because I know for a fact that you were involved in in Donald Trump's debate preparation. And then what is the what are the next steps? Because again, now you are there's a there's a there's a, a vibe change now mm -hmm. after this debate. Well, we're going to keep moving along and doing what we have been doing, which is having President Trump go all over this country to bring his winning message, to continue drawing this contrast of his strength versus Biden's weakness. And we're already doing that 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, President Trump on his way to the Commonwealth of Virginia now to host a massive rally. I see there are thousands of cars already lined up, ready to go. Virginia is a state that Republicans haven't won in decades. And we're going on offense there because we're, we're tied in the polls. I'm sure that will change it for the better after last night's performance. And we just announced we're opening 11 offices in the Commonwealth as well. So we're going to continue to go on offense and pick up as many votes as we possibly can to ensure that this election on November uh, the 5th is a, a historic re-election for President Trump and Republicans up and down the ballot as well. I've got to get your takeaway because this is the number one talking point right now on the left. The people that would like to kick, you know, the people that cut your mic and kick you off air when you're on CNN, they say to swap the candidate quick, change out Joe Biden. This is every, everyone saying from Morning Joe to the New York Times op-ed pages, they are all now in unison saying the same thing, which always makes us a little curious and a little suspicious. But nonetheless, they're all saying swap out the candidate. What's, what, what's the campaign's official line on that? What are, what's your thoughts? Look, I think it's virtually impossible for the Democrats to swap out Joe Biden. They're stuck with him. And you know what? They did it to themselves because we have been calling out the truth for months. We have been saying Joe Biden is incompetent. He's a terrible candidate. Look at the polls. They've denied that reality. They clearly haven't gone out across this country like we have and heard feedback from voters who are not enthusiastic at all about Joe Biden's presidency, even before last night's performance. And shame on the media, because they've been complicit in the Democrats' cover-up of Joe Biden's clear physical and cognitive decline. But now the whole world can see that President Trump and our campaign is right. Republicans have been correct. Joe Biden cannot serve another four years. They are in complete disarray about that. I'm sure there's a lot of high-level calls with Democrat officials taking place this morning, trying to figure out what to do. Um, and that's up to them. I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get another horse in this race at this point. But no matter what, we'll be prepared for victory on November the 5th because it's not just Joe Biden's policies, it's the Democrat Party policies that have destroyed this country over the past few years. The Democrat Party supports open borders. The Democrat Party supports higher taxes. Democrat Party supports a weak foreign policy strategy that has resulted in more war, war more bloodshed around this world. President Trump stands for secure borders, law and order, low taxes, making gas cheap again, that's a winning message no matter who is on the ticket. It, it, it must have been particularly hard for you. It was hard, I think, for the whole of America to watch Joe Biden uh, crumble in the debate last night. And you can see Joe Biden sort of leading him around uh, by the hand afterwards. Joe Biden being incapable of doing the small stare. Uh, I know your campaign has sent this out uh, a couple of times, uh, being incapable of doing the, the teeny stare uh, on the debate stage uh, afterward. Um, you know, you at, at some point, do you sit back and you're like, this is elder abuse? Absolutely. As an American citizen last night, not just as, as President Trump's spokeswoman, as someone who loves this country, it was deeply concerning to watch. There were times I actually like shielded away from the television uh, because this is the leader of the free world, after all, whether we mm. like it or not. And our adversaries absolutely were watching Joe Biden's performance last night. And now they are further plotting to take advantage of our country before they know he will be departing office this fall. They already are. They This week, while Biden was hiding in the woods, we know that 400 uh, ISIS-linked terrorists were smuggled into our country by ISIS at Joe Biden's open border. Uh, of course, we see China encroaching on Taiwan. We see the war in Ukraine uh, continuing to unfold. We see Iranian-backed terrorists in the Middle East continuing to launch attacks on our ally Israel. That's not even mentioning what's happening here at home with the chaos and division that Joe Biden has caused. Uh, so it's very concerning that this is the leader of our country right now. 
Um, and so while we're elated about President Trump's amazing debate performance last night, we're not elated about what is happening to our nation. Uh, but that's why President Trump and our team are fighting so very hard to, de- to sh- ensure victory. We have a country to save and President Trump is the man to do it. It's a big task, a huge challenge. Um, but we have the best leader in President Trump who's building an amazing political movement that is backed by millions and millions of common sense, hardworking people across this country. And uh, we're going to we're going to win on November 5th. And just really quickly, because I know that you're short on time, but are you seeing a ton of inflow, a ton of positive inflow? I'm seeing like Bill Ackman, who's a left wing billionaire tweeting about yeah. like it's it, Trump's going to be president. We should all oh, support absolutely. Trump now. It's, it's yeah. remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing more unification around President Trump, no doubt about it. Uh, We've raised a significant sum of money in the last 24 hours from Mm -hmm. grassroots grassroots patriots across this great country. So anyone who wants to join our team, please do. We need boots on the ground as well in the key battleground states to ensure election integrity. That's a big part of making sure we can truly win in a free and fair election. So go to DonaldJTrump.com and sign up today. We, We cannot get complacent. We have to win. We'll be watching for your booking on Casey Hunt's show. It will be, sh- <laughs> what a wonderful vindication. Yeah. Uh, and, and I will uh, say, give credit where credit is due. They asked good questions last night. They did focus on issues that mattered. They asked tough questions of both candidates and we appreciate that. That is what we were hoping for all week long. So to Casey Hunt, same time next week, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. We'll be watching. Thank you so much, Caroline. Uh, here we go, everybody. Go follow Caroline. There we go. What are we at? Oh, 166,000. Let's go, baby. On to a million. Thank you so much. Thanks, Godspeed. Thank you.